here from that Irish schoolhouse. Welcome to my channel. So today I am going to show you the supplementary books that I have chosen for this year. Now anyone who follows me on Instagram will know that I am waiting to buy my language arts. So I will do a separate video for maths and English which is our main curriculum. This is just kind of um, books that I've decided to add in to go along with it, which is kind of, I guess, like geography, science-y. So the first ones that we are doing actually, which is also probably more of a curriculum style, is The Good and the Beautiful Space Science. Sorry. And then I've got this little book that goes along with it saying who was Galileo. Now, I think there, there is a book um, about Galileo to go along with it that I didn't buy because it would have been a lot to ship. So I just chose this one and I think that that's fine. Um, there's some pictures and some facts. Um, I don't think it's the biggest deal in the world, especially at the age of my children. We are doing space as our science this year. So I also have quite a few little extra books. So I have a space sticker book. which is Osborne. A lot of these things are Osborne. And so as you can see, there's quite a lot of, um, there's a little fact boxes and a lot of pictures. And just to kind of start um, start layering up um, the children's knowledge, this is a Lift the Flap book. I think with these Lift the Flap books, you can kind of get confused with the Lift the Flap book. You can think, oh, Lift the Flap, oh, it's only for little babies. Um, but this, whoop. But this, as you can see, does have a lot of information. There's a lot of reading in it. Um, and I think that there's, I, we're not gonna go through a whole book in one go. We'll probably do um, kind of a page at a time and look, this is, this is talking about Galileo, which kind of ties into um, the other Galileo book that I have, which goes along with the curriculum. So I haven't really had a huge, uh, huge look into the curriculum. I know that it's more aimed at older children, but again, what I like about the good and the beautiful is you can kind of figure it out as you go along, what's appropriate, what's not appropriate, aim it at your child's level, and the fact that it can be done to different age ranges at the same time is helpful because that saves me time. Alongside the space, um, I made a choice to do kind of geography, so just basic, um, basic learning about the globe, what our world looks like. We're going, we're going to get a globe. We have got an atlas, um, a little sticker atlas too, um, just to kind of start figuring out where things are. And again, if you are following me on Instagram, you'll know that I am doing a math, like a wildlife math um, workbook um, for summer school and so the, they have like math facts and so we were talking about uh, turn something turn I don't know anyway some sort of bird that starts up in Greenland and we were looking at where Greenland was and it, it um, traveled all the way down to Antarctica and so this is really helpful already even though we haven't technically started our um, our next school year we have used this um, to look at geographically what what is going on, where Ireland is, we've just went to Scotland, so where Scotland is, comparatively speaking, and how small it is, and um, Daddy's from Zimbabwe, so where Zimbabwe is, so it, it is really helpful. And again, it's just a sticker book. It has like countries and continents, and then towards the middle, you have all these lovely stickers, and it tells you, I mean, like, we all know where that goes. <laughs> um, and so you can then, it tells you which page to put it on. And then it gives you, I'll show you. Tells you which page to put it on. And for example, there would be, it wouldn't, it would be a lighter color. So this is going to be a sticker that your child is going to put on. So I think those type of things are great. And ultimately, look, it shows you um, on the globe there. Um, or sorry, the bigger map there as to where exactly they are zooming into. 
So I think that helps. I think just more to get a context as to where we are. So where we are in the universe and where we are in. Okay, so I can't put my finger on a wonderful solar system art pack that I bought last year around the same time as I bought the curriculum um, and I got it in tiger flying tiger or whatever it's called now and it looks great and literally as I'm pulling everything out I know I have it somewhere somewhere safe very safe so the kids can't find it and mommy can't find it either so we'll just move on but I have a few months to find that because I do want to do that as soon as you start kind of learning planets and um, figuring it out I think that that's gonna be great visual and um, my kids are creative and visual if it's not hectic so they are visual learners as long as there's not too much color and so this was a great one because it's a model and you can see the planets um, going around the sun and that's really helpful also something that I have already started with them as kind of like the first step is watching on Netflix the magic school bus and so we did the science or sorry, we did the science. It's all about science. And um, we did the space one of that to kind of open up, you know, what the sun was and all these interesting, there was tons and tons of facts that my kids are not gonna remember, but they enjoy watching it and it's a start. So then when I, you know, open these books and they're looking at all these pictures and they're like, wait, that's not what the sun looks like. And, you know, well, the earth is actually flat, but they've already seen it. It's not the first time that they're kind of, that this concept is coming to them. And also I think having a globe will make a difference. And also having that, um, that visual aid, if I can find it. And if not, I'll be going to Flying Tiger. So another thing that I wanted to bring in this year a little bit more was a bit of history. We have, last year, we just kind of stumbled upon doing a little bit of American history. We did Irish geography, very localized, looking at the island of Ireland and we went to a few different historical sites and kind of brought in history that way. Um, but we didn't have a lot of background. And so it was a lot of, it was, I found it quite difficult to discuss things with the kids um, as we were there. I think they prefer learning about it first and then going and visiting and being like, oh, remember when I said this? Well, that's what I meant to remember when I said this, this is what I meant. So we have been listening to Alexander Hamilton, or we call it Hamilton the Musical. Um, if you are on my Instagram, you probably would have seen it. Um, my husband and I went to it. We are big fans. We don't let the kids listen to all of it. We are very careful with what our children listen to. There are certain songs that they can listen to, or, or there are certain songs that they can listen to with and um, bits fast forwarded or turned down. And we are very, very careful. So for example, if the kids are um, wanting to listen to Hamilton in the car and I'm tired, I don't actually put it on because I know I need to be aware. So just putting that out there, <laughs> but there is a lot of um, interesting content. The kids are learning a lot. They know the first four, um, first four American presidents. They know a lot of the years and dates and so when we were talking to them about the famine, um, we were able to talk about it in the context of when Hamilton was versus, you know, about 50 to 75 years later was then when the influx of people from Ireland to America or whatever. So this is called Escape Into the Night. So this actually, this author, was recommended to me I'll tell you why in a minute but this author was recommended to me and so I just so happened to see that this was a sec another series that she did this is another series that she did um it's a in 1857 which is about 50 again 50 to 70 years after Hamilton but it's still pretty close you know in church my kids were doing Cory ten boom and so I, I do like these little, I don't even know what they're called, little lights. Christian Focus Publication. They're nice little books that kind of um, give the stories of missionaries or in kind of like a nice little format. Like it's kind of, it's a more like a picture book 
kind of like a reader so probably probably by the end of next year um hunter who should be able to read this by himself but i think i will read this for them um in a book club that we were in we read the second carrie ten boom book um but we also have the movie the hiding place and i think it, obviously i will not be showing that to my children <laughs> anytime soon but again you know it's it's starting a dialogue with my children about a time that's different to them um, and a concept that is hard to deal with but it's kind of laying the foundations of there is this really big thing that happened in history and um, you know we're just starting small and then as they grow they can you know when they're older read the bigger book The Hiding Place watch the movie things like that Similarly, picture book Anne Frank. Again, it's around about the same time. It's a picture book. It's um, it's it's you know, from their perspective, it's you know, from a child's perspective. I remember growing up learning about um, Anne Frank, and it was very sad. But I think it is a very good way to start bringing in these kind of bigger concepts bigger issues in child-friendly, age-appropriate ways. You know, we're not naive. Bad things happen in the world. Bad things have happened. It's there, plain and simple. And for our children to have um, a well-rounded education, um, we don't want to scare them. But at the same time, I think, you know, this is a nice, nicer way than just having to learn a ton, ton of dates and times and people's names and stuff like that. So again, the Osborne Lift the Flat books, you know, they're not super, super fun. There's a lot of information, but it is interesting. And so I think for the older, for the older ones, um, they kind of last. So it's not something that, you know, my two-year-old or my four-year-old will probably sit and, you know, read with me. Um, but I'm hoping that especially towards the middle or end of next year, um, with me being five and with Hunter being seven, that they'll sit and listen to even just a page at a time. And just because I got the second World War one, I also got the first World War one. Again, probably not going to do this, but if something comes up, we can just have a quick look and see, you know, what the reasons for the second World War were in the first place. And again, all those, uh, there's a lot of movies and series that also deal with stuff like that. Um, things that are on, that happen at the same time. A lot of fiction, and I don't mind, um, you know, kids fiction that is based around that time. Um, I know there was like a, an Instagram thing um, about the Holocaust. Um, I think it's like I Am Evie or something like that. And um, I thought that that was a really good idea because they were, they were saying that a lot of people in this generation don't understand the severity of how awful the Holocaust was and how many people died and how there was no way that people, you know, how people could or couldn't fight against it. So I think things even like having books like Schindler's List is a great resource. And um, you're gonna hate me. <laughs> Look what else I bought. <laughs> Another lift the flap book. Um, this is just for fun. This is probably, this is just for the kids to be having a look um, and figuring out. We were, went to W5, we did the digestive system. Um, we did the, you know, this is great actually. Um, the nervous system they've already had experience with. History. Next year, in case you didn't know, it is the 175th anniversary of the famine. So we thought it would be a great idea. Again, if you are on Instagram, you would have seen my son's potato crop. And so again, we're starting it slowly. We already looked at um, uh, a couple of YouTube videos about what a famine is. And he's, he's doing potatoes this year. He's going to do potatoes again next year. Um, and we are going to do um, a little project, not a project. Little ones are probably a little bit too young for the Epic Museum. 
We may or may not do it this year, but we will probably do the Jeannie Johnson, the Famine Ship, and these are the books I chose to go with that. I know that there is a DVD. I didn't want to invest in the DVD. I think it wasn't too expensive, but I wanted to see how far we got with this, how, how much they liked it. Do you like the boxcar children? But I think this is a little bit heavier. Um, I did this as a child. I remember um, doing it and being quite upset about the content. I don't know if I'm going to be able to read it to them. It's a very, very sad time. I have little kids myself. And so to, um, so to think of them in that situation is very, very difficult. Um, I was looking for more of a pop-up hardback um, kind of child-friendly book because this is more a read aloud and I wanted something that might be a little bit more engaging especially for the little ones and I am pleasantly surprised <laughs> I don't know if you can see that and um, it's just nicely done nicely written you definitely can't see that but it's it's um hi my name is Declan Duffy this scary looking building is going to be my new home. I'm tired and I'm cold and I'm hungry and frightened. And so it's just kind of like, um, you know, where they lived. And that's like a little pop up of the inside. And so this is kind of just a little bit more engaging. It's, I think, it's very, very sad. And even seeing the pictures is quite sad as well. There is, it's a very thick book. I don't think we're going to get through it very, very quick. Oh, actually, no, no, no. No, it's just because of the end. That's a lie. We probably will get past it very quick. <laughs> um, and then there's this lovely um, thing at the back. It seems like... Oh, and it's talking about emigration as well. So, I mean, pictures if I can find them again. These pictures are very similar to the statues in Dublin. I don't know if anyone is from Dublin, um, but on the Keys docks on the way to the O2, or it's called the Three, I don't know, um, near where the Jeannie Johnson is anyway, there is um, a memorial statues um, artwork and it's very um, withered people, kind of sim similar uh, gait and stance to this. And so I think that that will help, like I said before, then the same author as the one I showed you earlier, um, Lois Wilfred Walford Johnson, Readers from the Sea. So this is based in Ireland and it's introducing the concept of Vikings. We went to Dublinia last year and again, I think if we go to, if we read this and go again, they'll have a little bit more knowledge, a little bit more understanding of what a Viking is. Um, I also saw the beginning of All right, so I'll just read the back because that's really what you want to hear, isn't it? <laughs> well, when Brianna O'Toole rescues a stranger from drowning, she doesn't realise that her actions may have put her family and village in danger. Then, in one frightening day, Viking raiders... That's very poorly written. Then, in one Viking day... In one frightening day... <laughs> Then in one frightening day, Viking lady read it. Okay, I'll read it the way it's written, but I don't think it's very well written. Then in one frightening day, Viking raiders capture Brie and her brother Devon and take them away from their home in Ireland. All of the Irish prisoners are at the mercy of Mikael, the proud young leader of the Vikings. Separated by Mikael, Brie and Devon each face different journeys to current. As Brie sails towards a life of slavery in Norway and as Devon struggles to survive on his own, they must choose to trust God in spite of the troubles that they face. And so I think that um, just getting the context of what a Viking is, it's kind of more of a, a little bit of context of Ireland. Again, bringing in, you know, whoop, they're sailing away to Norway and so we can do that on our map um, and what the story is there. So in case you didn't get that, we are... Um, some of those books are Christian based and so we will be doing Bible with our kids. This is a giant print Bible which I am pretty impressed at. Um, I think definitely it's a little bit floppy so this one was only about nine euro and I wanted to see what size the giant print was before I invested I think. I think a leatherback is about 50 euro 
Um, so I might not invest <laughs> until he's a little bit older. Um, but we'll see. This one might be a little bit difficult to hold, but definitely the size of the print is quite good. Um, compared to um other Bibles, I think it's I think this is seventeen, and the others the standard is twelve. I don't know what that means. Seventeen millimeters. I don't know. Um, another one which I would recommend anyone if you are wanting to go through the Bible is the Action Bible. This is a great one. It's kind of done done in comic book style. So we have already started this, and we do kind of a story a day so okay so we'll start with this so it kind of they do it's kind of a comic book style and so you read what's going on and then you can see at the top based on um, judges one to three and so you can see that this I'm really struggling here I should have thought this through <laughs> this is ba this is one they've got a little map here too one two three so that's only three um, pages, but it's, oh, that's the funny one actually, where he stabs him in the side and he's so fat. I think my kids will, will laugh at that one, but it's pretty gruesome as well. Um, but it's all true. And I think that um, this is a great way again to start getting the concepts of some of the stories, the biblical stories. So it, it means so much more um to them when they are older and when they are reading them from from the um from the biblical text this was again recommended to me and it is very biblically accurate so far and it it was my friend who recommended said that they had gone through it and there was nothing that they disagreed so these were not the biggest waste of money but a little waste of money. <laughs> I have these fantastic, fantastic puzzle books, which are A4 puzzle books, which I got in probably the works or deals or somewhere like that. Um, but the kids have gone through them this year. So we did word searches, puzzles, and activities. They were 150 each. These ones were, which I thought was gonna be something similar, were about a fiver or six euro each. But I was like, you know what? The other ones were a steal. They were really good, really good value. And then this came. This is, this is, yeah, disappointing. Just the size, like five euro for this is a, yeah. <laughs> but at the same time, they are simple little crosswords. Um, whoop, anyway, they're simple little crosswords, kids book of crosswords. It's a start. My kids love activities, especially Hunter. And Nevi loves mazes. Neve is a whiz at mazes. And so these are kind of extra activities. I'm finding I need something when I'm explaining something to someone. I need time while the other person is doing something, either handwriting or one of these kind of puzzles. Or when someone's um, finished doing the work that I've allocated them, that they can then go and, a little word search, that they can then go to their book, do a page and wait for me. Um, and so I think that that really has saved my sanity. This is about 10 hours of me talking. <laughs> I hope I edited it down to a little bit less. <laughs> um, I hope this has been useful or helpful. Um, I will definitely, 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 definitely <laughs> um, have a video when, the, when my language arts and my maths comes in. And if you are not following me on Instagram, follow me on Instagram and you will see straight away as they come in because I get excited, very excited by things like that. And yes, well done for sticking with it. <laughs> I appreciate the support and I'll see you again soon. Bye.